Hey everyone, um, I've taken a break from making videos for a while. There's some things I wanted to talk about. Uh, recently I read an article in Scientific American about um, four actors that a research team hired to pretend to be physicists. And they were trained how to give a lecture to the students and then they had the students rate the lecturer afterwards. And and the men got higher scores across the board, and I thought that was interesting. Just the sexism in science. I've read some other articles about how women are kind of more going more towards the private sector than staying and teaching because of the sexism that is going on in universities. And I, my ex-boyfriend and I got in a huge fight one time about this subject where he's he claimed that all oh, men's and women's brains are different and uh, they don't think as logical or some bullshit like that. And, you know, I was younger then. Now I wouldn't have taken that. He would have been dumped. But um, that kind of thing really pisses me off. And I wanted to talk about WikiLeaks. I haven't heard anyone discussing it, at least the blogs that I've been, or the uh, videos that I've been following. But what, I walked out of my house the other day and I found this swastika that was carved into a tree like in front of the next door neighbor's property. And I've been kind of wary of these neighbors because they're, they look like tweakers. They're meth addicts. There's people going in and out of there. There was a time when there was drug selling going on in the alleyway that's right by their house. Um, the man who lives there in the front part, he's just covered with tattoos all over his neck and face. I mean, he's obviously been in jail. And then there's a registered sex offender that lives somewhere in that little like white trash hovel that's going on. And it just reminded me of when I lived in London. Um, I met like face to face, up close and personal people who were in the BNP and uh, National Front or skinhead people and these are some of the scariest motherfuckers I've ever met in my life so the way I met them was through roller derby and ironically enough when we split from the original roller derby team we wanted to make this like egalitarian uh, woman empowering league and then this woman comes in she's Australian and She's very, very rockabilly, and well, one of my best friends is like super rockabilly, so that didn't bother me, but um, she, she had this air about her that she was very modern in a sense. She ran her own business on the internet selling clothes, like rockabilly kind of clothes, and she seemed really cool, and we were telling her all about the league and how we wanted to work with this um, one charity that sends money to Africa to help women with like medical expenses things and help them to escape from getting clitorectomies and things like that and like later maybe a day or two goes by and I get an email from her and she's questioning the whole charity aspect and she feels like she that the league doesn't need to participate that it should be something that you do on your own and, and like how she was giving money to the boars in South Africa. And I was like, the boars in South Africa, I didn't know what that was. And it, it's white farmers who, she she says that, are being attacked and kicked off their lands by blacks. And then I asked a South African woman about the boars, and she's like, no, they're stupid. And it's kind of a racist cause, apparently. So that like started, like, the first warning flag comes up. And then she recruits her friend, this Italian girl. And systematically, they start dismantling our league. They brought all their friends in. And I left because it just got more and more bizarre. And later on, they kicked my friends, who also helped start the league, out. But before that, um, they were all hanging out, being chummy and things like that. And... The woman, I'm just going to call her Goring's girl, she uh, shows my friend her arm and was like, uh, 
had an 88 on it. And apparently that means Heil Hitler. And she's going off about how in like the early 90s and 80s, how she was, you know, a skinhead. And that's how she met her husband. And her husband, he's very scary. I mean, the man looks like a Stafford Terrier, basically. He has about the manners of one, too. And so it turns out that she's actually not this modern career woman, that he's actually in control of the whole business and what goes into it. And um, she's basically plays housewife, and then he's letting her go and do this roller derby thing to kind of market their business. And uh, the Italian woman, her boyfriend looks like a trauma, <laughs> a trauma character, basically, like Toxie. And he's British and part of the BNP National Front scene. And apparently when my friend went over there, they had like a set of Nazi dishes. Like they must, I don't know how they got it, probably on the black market or wherever people go to get Nazi dishes. But, but anyway, these were the, the National Front people. And I find it highly ironic that both the Goring's girl and the Italian woman were very, very Britain for the British type. And I'm sitting there looking at them. I'm like, you're not even British. And your, your significant others are fucking troll looking beings. I mean, how, how could they, is that all they could be proud of is their race? And I found London to be one of the most, like, racially polarized places as I've ever been. And uh, I had culture shock the moment I stepped off the plane. I remember getting there to Heathrow, and I walked out, and there was at least five women in burkas with an old man in a wheelchair, and they are going to pick up something. And I was like, where the fuck am I? Am I in, like, Pakistan or something? And then... Uh, the next, I stayed in Shepherd's Bush at this youth hostel, and we were evacuated the next day because someone had set these packages out that looked like bombs, and it turned out to be some sort of dipshits um, art project. They're trying to make a statement by evacu scaring the shit out of everyone. And then later on that week, I moved into an apartment about a mile north from King's Cross. It's in this little shit trifecta, as I call it. It's like about a mile from Camden, about a mile from Cali Road, and a mile from King's Cross. And so I'm sitting there, I'm talking to my boyfriend on the phone, and then I hear this woman screaming, and she's screaming, no, don't, don't, please don't. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And I peek out the window, and everyone, like, in there, there was, like, flats behind my bed sit, I was, like, on the third floor. They were at, had, like, two floors, and they were peeking out, too. And she was screaming and screaming, and I was like, oh, my God, she's getting raped. What do I do? And my boyfriend's like, oh, you know. I'm like, should I call 999? And they're just like, no, don't bother. And I was like, fuck this. So I hung up on him, and I ended up calling the cops. And I could hear her sobbing out there. But then, like, she got up and left, apparently. And eventually they came, like, 15, 20 minutes later because, you know, how – the police give a shit about a woman being raped and uh, checked it out, but they couldn't find her. So that was my first, like, week experience in London. And then my friend, she was raped by a Middle Eastern-looking man. And then my other friend, the same one who actually was in roller derby with me, the Rockabilly girl, and she was walking to meet her boyfriend for his birthday and seven like black kids came and they beat the shit out of her trying to steal her purse and she wouldn't let her purse go and they just kept beating her and beating her until someone came up the street and no one stopped to help her mind you they just kept on going but they ran away and then the cops it, it was bizarre I don't know what happened but you know the moral of the, my story is the point I'm trying to make is that they're not fucking racist Shit has happened to these women, and they're not racist. They didn't turn to Nazism. They didn't turn to the National Front or BNP for the shit that's happened to them. They can disconnect what has happened to them personally with 
not everyone of this color or this race or this gender is a fucking asshole. I think it's really cowardly to run to something like the BNP. If anything happens to you, most of these people who are in the BNP haven't had things happen to them. They're just racists and hate mongers and fascists, basically. They, they don't give a shit about freedom. They don't care about your freedom, anyone's freedom. They want to have control, basically. I was just really disturbed by meeting these skinhead women and how they really kind of bought into this whole patriarchal society of them being good housewives, but they also wanted to be like rock and roll hard chicks at the same time. And it just didn't fit together. You know, they're not really buying into the ideal that Hitler has put forth, but then they are, they are in some ways, uh, it's bizarre. It was disturbing. And, you know, we had these little fantasies about trying to get them kicked out of where they were practicing and, but in the end, we decided not to because they were the type of people who would, like, go to your house and beat the shit out of you and rape you or do something, like, really fucked up and not care because they, they didn't really give a shit about anything other than themselves and their little clique. It was as if they saw everyone outside of their little group as the enemy and they would do anything to smash the enemy. And, you know, I guess meeting them was good in a sense because it really woke me up politically and inspired me to start speaking out against their type of hate and to support causes that are, that are in direct opposition to them. And it inspired me not to back down to these fascist hate mongers no matter what color or nationality or creed they might be. And this is a, one of the reasons I'm kind of disappointed in YouTube because it is really a safe haven for these fascists and extreme right-wing Christians and whoever else that has any sort of extreme patriarchal fucking opinion to speak, but, you know, People like Antique Lens and Coughlin, who I think they both put a lot of effort and thought and compassion into their videos. I have to say it's pretty refreshing to see people speaking their opinions and not trying to sell you something. Because isn't that what Google really wants to do with YouTube, is to make everything fucking commercial? I just was reading that they're trying to do away with net neutrality by making a um, little deal with Verizon to make sure some content gets pushed first. So it's just, what can I say? Everything's fucked right now. So, all right, I'm in on that. Bye.